Hi guys, I was thinking about um, uh, the problem with ideals and um, I find in church a lot, in our music, in our preaching, in our whatever, in what we do, we deal a lot with ideals. We deal with a lot with how it should be like we just celebrate the uh, how it should be in our lives instead of how it is and i believe we have to celebrate how it should be but we need to talk about how it is in our preaching in our in the way that we do things i think it does a disservice to people when you don't talk about what's real and I keep on going back to this conversation that I saw yesterday between C Stephen Furtick and John Gray and I think why um, the topic of racism um, makes people uncomfortable is because it is a painful subject and it is um, a divisive subject um, some people will say we don't deal with racism anymore. Some people will say um, um, people that experience racism need to just get over it, um, develop skin. And some people will say that it is, it's all about racism and, and the white man and the black man and they, they just live there constantly. And I think that um, the church needs to start being a voice for all these issues and we don't need to turn it into a political thing we don't need to turn it turn our pop up into a political rally but we need to say what's wrong what's wrong is wrong and what's right is right um, we need to get back there. We need to stop with this pie-in-the-sky theology. And what I loved about Jesus' ministry is he met people where they are. And I don't mean just physically where they were, physically where they were too, but mentally, emotionally where they were. He met people where they were. He talked with hookers. He talked with people that um, other people didn't have anything to do with. And he brought them up to a higher level. So if we can begin talking about issues that people are really facing, and not in a religious way, not in not in a you can get through a storm but real issues i think people will flock to the church because right now people think god is just a religious idea and they're like i don't like religion i don't believe in organized religion because that's all all we've shown them we haven't shown them the person of jesus christ they say it's okay for some people, but I don't believe in that or whatever. But um, Jesus is not a religion. In fact, he came to break religion. Jesus himself is a person. And to get to know the person of Christ is what the world needs. And we need to bring to bring Christ down to a level that people are not so scared of him like oh I'm going to do this and we need to stop with this religious dogma thinking that we're so spiritual like I think we're afraid to come out of um, massive spirituality and really get down to what is I think we're afraid that it's insulting to God as king. Yes, he is king. Yes, he is. Um, uh, yes, this is his world. And yes, um, 
he deserves all the glory and all the praise but people are dealing with a lot of stuff right now and they don't need to hear that they need how does God relate to my life now not the, that I could get through a storm not that I can make it they need to know how does God relate to my life now not this pie in the sky theology that we've been feeding people and I think the church is afraid to be real because the reason that we're afraid to be real is because our lives might actually change you but we're afraid uh, to be exposed um, before our lives become changed. We like to, to talk about healing in this religious way, um, but we don't like to deal with issues um, in a real way. You know, you know what I say? I've heard uh, leaders say this. They said, shake off all your heavy bands and come to Christ. But... But the Lord doesn't want you to shake it off. The Lord wants you to bring it to him so he can take it and deal with it. Church is supposed to be a place where you can bring your issues, where you can bring all, your, all, all the crap from your life and get healing and restoration. But often it, a the church is a place where people feel judged and people feel like they can't be themselves. And I just want to break that spirit of re religiosity today because I think if we can show people that it is a relationship with Christ, not a religious dogma uh, that saves you, they'll come running to the church. And if we can write songs, uh, not only worship songs, we need those too. But I think there needs to be more life songs. There needs to be more songs about how God can step into ordinary life and just change it. Okay, um, a couple years ago, I wrote a song, for instance, about divorce and I've never been divorced I've never been married but because I'm a storyteller I put myself in a character's position and began to write uh, from that character's position and I also uh, wrote a song um, about um, meeting the person that you love and going there and how God is in that too and you know I wrote I wrote a breakup song see because God comes into life we don't fit life around God we fit God around our lives he's the center of our lives and he comes to invade our lives. He comes to invade every aspect of our lives and that's what he wants. And I believe that's what the world is dying for and I believe we need to change the way we actually minister to people. Um, I always said this, I always said, I personally, as a preacher, hate the idea of a pulpit because it means like I'm up here and I'm giving you this word and you're down here and you're taking notes. Listen, we're all in this together. I'm as guilty as of things as you are. I'm no better because I'm a preacher. I'm, I'm no better because I went to Bible college. I just went to Bible college to learn. To learn. And uh, funny enough, I went 
I first went to Tyndale College for English. And the only reason I transferred to Bible College, it wasn't um, because at that time, well, God had called me, but it, it wasn't because at that time God had called me, I just, whatever. It was because I wanted to get a, a degree in, in less than 10 years. So that's why I switched. Um, but I want to make God accessible, accessible to people. Not that I want to de, um, not that I want to say that God is a person and whatever. He's just like me. I know he's king and stuff. But before we could get to the king part, I think we as humans need to grasp um, the human part. And once people can grasp that, then they can move on to the king part. But if you make God so high so that people feel that they can't um, grasp the concept of God or come to God as they are, then you'll have a lot of trouble. You'll have a lot of people working to get close to God um, when they should be just being themselves and let God step into that with them. Um, I was listening to someone the other day and they were talking about how difficult it was to read the word and whatever. And I felt like saying, I didn't say this because there was a group of people there, but I felt like saying, you don't have to um, somehow carve out time for God. Um, or you don't have to carve out time to read the word. Um, but what you do have to do is getting involved in your life. Um, getting involved in your daily decisions. Talk to him each step of the way to, to just guide you and lead you. And if he leads you, if he... Um, if you sense in your spirit that you ought to pick up the word, then you pick up the word. But he, he doesn't want it to be a chore. He wants you to get to know him. He wants you to get to know him. And yes, one, the first way to do that is through his word. But um, he does that in different ways. So... Get to know him, get to, get to talking to him, and he'll show you what works for your life um, so you could get to know him and get to know his word. And he'll direct you on the right Bible reading plan or on the right things to for you to do for your spirit and your personality um, to get to know him. He just wants to get to know you to get to know him. He just wants to love on you for real. He wants this thing between you and him to be real. He's desperate for that. Gone are the days of church, churchiness and uh, churchianity and stuff. He wants his children to get to know him for real. Gone are the days of idealism. We need to strip away. We need to talk about the idealism thing um, for a bit, but we more need to talk about the realness of Christ. How he's he's great. He's awesome. He's wonderful. He can do it again. But will he help me when? Uh, when I have my two-year-old daughter at two in the morning and, you know, she's colicky and she's crying and I just don't know what to do. So how will a great God help with that? I think, 
I think if we would just um, bring God into a more real state of affairs and show people who God really is, they'd flock to him. They'd flock to him. They'd want him every day. They'd get off drugs. They'd get healed. But we need to just um, cool it with the religious thing and just show people God, how God can be everything they are searching for. And I think when we do that, this whole thing will stop. When we can bring God, when we can bring God into our lives in a very real way and stop with this religious nonsense, that's what, what the world needs to be transformed. And it's funny, because if you think of the time where Jesus lived, he was so radical. We talk about Jesus like he was this angel from heaven and whatever. He was a hellraiser, if you'd ever seen one. He, he messed up all kinds of theology. He did all kinds of stuff that was illegal and scandalous. He did all kinds of that. So our assignment now is to do what he did. Um, get outside of our churchy religious heads and boxes and really show people the real Jesus. The savage Jesus. The Jesus that won't let them go regardless of what they've done and what they do, what they've done and what they're doing. Lord Jesus, teach us how to be, teach us that it's okay to be real, teach us that it's okay to be broken because you are the healer and you will restore us. And once we come to you with our brokenness, you know what to do with it. We don't have to hide our brokenness, we have to bring it to you. We don't have to shake it off and put on this religious face. We need to cry before you. We need to bring it to you and say, here's my heart, God. Teach us how to do it. Teach us that it's okay to do it. Bring us out of our religious boxes. Bring us out of our churchiology and Lord Jesus. Teach us you and teach us. Open our eyes, God, so that we may see you. We want to see you desperately, but Lord, quite honestly, we don't know how. Lord God, show us how. We need to know how. Show us how to bi to build bridges. Show us how to have real church. Show us how to go on the streets and, and talk to people, not preach to people, but just talk to people where they are. Show us how to do that, God. Because your ministry it was so, it's so interesting your ministry mostly took place outside of the um outside of the synagogue in fact you hardly taught in the synagogue and millions of people follow you lord god help us to to have conversations help us to change the way we are actually thinking about doing church. Help us instead of building campuses, God, instead of building churches, God, help us to build people. And Lord Jesus, help us to show people through our lives the, the real way of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. Teach us today what you want us to know. In the name of Jesus, amen. He wants to do something new, but we need to take the limits off. We need to take the, no, this is not God, no, this is not church, off. And just do something.
something new and let him just run what we do. Pastors, ask the Lord. Lord, how can my congregation show Jesus in a very real way, not in, a, in an idealistic way, just you in a real way? I talked about the song Bleeding Love yesterday, and um, he wants us when they when they shed our blood he wants us to love and real love the god kind of love the hard kind of love the stick with you through anything kind of love that's what the world needs and that's what will change this climate that's what will change this culture that's what will change that's what will bring the holy spirit down the real love Real love, they're searching for a real love. That show them what they can't see, real love. Oh, they're searching for a real love. I think.